All right, guys. I hope you can hear me. Uh, let me just do a few tests to make sure that everything is okay. Got some audio here. Do to do. Where's my video? Where's my video? Test, test, test. Test, test, test. Sounds like we are doing good. So, happy new ZBrush day. Uh, first thing that you'll notice is that it looks like the, they cleaned up the interface a bit. It's uh, spotting a nice uh, flat uh, uh, design and uh, it's, it looks much cleaner. I believe uh, users of ZBrush Core has been already uh, been using the newer updated interface. But other than that, um, we still we are using gradients. So uh, I haven't touched, I haven't customized anything. This is a vanilla uh, four or eight, uh, and I deliberately left it as it is. And one of my first tests that I want to do is to try and see whether or not the uh, interface uh, settings from uh, the previous version of ZBrush work. And whether or not uh, they are, uh, there's any issues there. Uh, now I am strong believer that in order to get the best out of ZBrush, you have to customize it for your own needs. Uh, and uh, as a matter of fact, all my previous ZBrush uh, versions, every previous version of ZBrush I've used was customized by hand uh, to create the interface that allows for speed and uh, uh, nice and custom. Uh, and uh, uh, basically I was expanding on the interface as, I, as I've been, as new, the new features were added to ZBrush and its uh, interface pretty much grew organically around certain workflows that uh, new tools uh, allowed for. Now with the addition of real-time live booleans and all the cool deformers, I can see how my workflow would change drastically from what it used uh, used to be. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, the hard surface modeling in ZBrush wasn't wasn't my favorite. In the past, I would much rather stick to 3D code because it, it uh, in 3D code hard surface stuff is. Uh, somewhat real time, but now with live booleans, uh, what what live live booleans get, bring to the table is a non-destructive workflow, which is insanely crucial when it comes to game art production, especially in the industry where you need to create variations and modify assets after the fact, and having the an ability to. Uh, work on assets in a non-destructive fashion is is uh, an insane advantage and uh, kudos to Pixelogic for giving us these tools. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, load my kind of vanilla interface and see how, how whether or not it works. A load UI and uh, it's gonna be in um, yeah. So uh, another thing that you'll notice is that uh, R8 is a 64-bit application by default. Uh, so the previous version of ZBrush would be in a different folder. All right, this feels more like home-ish. Uh, There's some glitchy-looking things, as you can see on the left. Uh, I don't think this is supposed to display this way. Yeah, um, other than that, let's see, yeah, like this subtool tree is, looks, looks broken big time. Other than that, uh, I mean, all my brushes are in here, but, or most of them, anyway, because I, I had some custom stuff there, and uh, I also have my custom uh, palettes that I would like to get at least those two back, because uh, I'm very much dependent on them. Okay, 
so you can see you can divide and you can switch between subdivision levels. I would love to have something that allows me to go to um, something to activate the live booleans. But uh, I guess there was a button, live boolean button here. So, like this type of stuff, I will have to go through and kind of update my interface to accommodate for the new tools. But for the time being, what I want to, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset my interface to vanilla one and uh, work with that. Kind of go through the basic features that I generally modify off, uh, change off right off the bat, and then I will work towards reimporting and making my uh, interface that I'm used to uh, making it work off screen because. Um, yeah, there's some issues here. So config, restore standard UI, there we go. Uh, well, first thing first, I'm left-handed, so I like to have my tool palette on the left. Uh, then I generally don't really like the subgroups. So let's go through preferences and make, let's see if there's anything new here as well. What keys does it matter? All right, UI. We don't want white buttons. Uh, I am a viewer. That's exciting. One open sub palette. I really don't like. And auto close UI groups, use UI groups. So, um, yeah, I, UI groups are great for uh, making making the interface a little bit easier to read, but I don't like uh, extra click. So, I'm going to disable that. And I also don't want right click navigation because I'm more of a old school. And that's probably going to be it for the time being. Let's store config and save UI. begin. First thing first, I mean, let's grab a cube. So uh, they added a new uh, set of primitives that are uh, basically you can modify them on the go and they're accessible through the gizmo. So whenever you go into your move scale rotate you, you'll see the new gizmo uh, being activated by default. Uh, but right now, I'm still using these, uh, the kind of the old school 3D meshes. Uh, if you make it polymesh 3D, so it becomes a 3D object, uh, and you go to move and click on this little gear, I, I believe there should be a shortcut for it, but for the time being, I'll just stick to clicking on the gear. And uh, you, there's these primitives, the transform types. So if I press on cylinder 3D, you can see we get this awesome little uh, dynamic thing that can be modified and changed. So, and all the deformers are here as well. So let's like uh, I'd like to go through uh, booleans first. So let's say we have we're we're making some kind of a hard surface part. Um, I'd love to see the dynamic subdivision on it. So you can see if I start adding smooth subdivision, it kind of smooths out the shape, which I don't necessarily want. I think I want to bevel it. So. Mm 
but with quick read bevel, uh, what it does is like it bevels everything. Uh, I believe I can uh, add some creasing, and all my shortcuts are missing, so I'll have to suffer and uh, find them by hand. But uh, okay, so you can adjust the angle and do crease. And this way, I only crease the hard edges. And now I can actually bevel it this way, which is cool. And I can do crease by poly groups. And now, we have, if I crank up the dynamic subdivision, we don't need the quick one, we would go for a smooth one. And uh, just two levels is fine. So we have a very nice uh, crisp uh, 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 cylindrical detail. Duplicate it, move it off to the side, and uh, you can see my live boolean mode is on. Uh, according to Pixelogic dudes, it looks like they've been disabling it when they're not using it to optimize the performance, but I'm just going to keep it on. Uh, I'm extremely impressed with the quality of the bevels, uh, uh, the quality of booleans that this thing provides. It's really, really, really good. Like, um, I've spent a lot of time looking for a modeler that uh, would give you really nice, clean booleans, and even even Mesh Fusion, which is probably one of the best boolean applications uh, out there. Uh, it's a it's a model plugin. Even even Mesh Fusion didn't really give you clean results uh, all hundred percent of the time, but this so far looks really good. Given I only played with the, the new ZBrush for last twenty minutes, so haven't really experienced all the edge case scenarios, but this is really good. So now that uh, and you can exit this mode to see out our, our uh, model. Now that I have this uh, a separate subtool, I can go in and replace this with the polycube. And with polycube, we can adjust the dimensions. And I can also switch back to gizmo and scale it. Oh. Have to be careful with the the way you grab this guy. Uh, one thing that uh, I really liked uh, from their demonstration is that the new uh, extender tool and what it does if I enable the, the, the polyframe it basically symmetrically s allows you to uh, make the thing bigger without modifying the edges or uh, like it, it adds geometry in between without modifying what's on the sides. And if you've done any kind of a, a reshaping in 3D of a beveled object that has a lot of uh, subdivisions on the side, you'll know how much of a pain it is to like select the bevel and uh, make sure that it's uh, it's properly selected. Okay, so we have this guy. Uh, I would probably want to cut off this piece. So what I'm going to do is duplicate this guy and then set it to subtractive. And uh, let's see, uh, able light boolean and the order of things matters. So uh, I'm going to with this guy select it to replace it in the cylinder. Alright, so and disable polygroup so I can see things better. So this guy needs to be additive. This needs to be subtractive, but it needs to subtract this guy. 
and not that. real okay so this is the guy that I'm trying to subtract oh there you go yeah, so basically I needed to activate this uh, this guy to act as a parent by pressing this little icon. And this makes the, the subtractive element only affect the, this guy. So that's pretty cool. Let's go back, see what we can do here. Well, maybe use an extender, or what else do we have here? Deformer extender. Oh, let's try multi slice. I don't know what that is. No idea what I'm doing here. Oh. Okay. So, play creasing. That's cool. Okay, so this basically creates a box and virtual box of sorts, and then it allows you to subdivide it to create quick subdivisions like this. So that's really handy. Uh, we can go set that. And one thing that I'm really curious about it uh, is to see how this new, uh, all the new tools work in conjunction with uh, the the older stuff, like the Z modeler, for example. Z modeler, because ZBrush is, oh, that's really cool. So that's the 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 IMM viewer or whatever they called it, the the thing that allows you kind of preview different brushes. Let's see. Nope. So. Okay, so if I grab QMesh, let's see. QMesh looks very similar for the most part to what it used to be before. I would love if they allowed to customize this thing more, the layout of it and uh, other stuff, but I don't know if, uh, if that's been added or not. Alright, so QMesh, Polyloop and Polygroup, and then we can grab something like this and QMesh it. And then maybe let's bevel it. Bevel. Mm, does it even? I don't know. Well, we can always do bevel on the edge. Yeah, that's why I really don't like the C modeler sometimes. Uh, it should complete. There you go. So let's disable dynamic for a sec so I can see what I'm doing. And then tap again and then we can do crease edge loop complete Oop. and the dynamic on got our basic shape Uh, now there are chisel brushes, which is really cool. There's a lot of other uh, neat new brushes that they've added. 
This is really interesting. Uh, I'm not gonna go over through every new feature today. I think for today I'll focus mostly on Gizmo and the uh, Booleans. Because they've added a lot and I also need a little bit more time to actually learn what what all the new features are and uh, kind of figure out how they work. So, so I'm not wasting your time. Okay, so withdraw if I click and let's see. And do split hidden. Now I have this guy as a separate sub tool. Pretty cool. Maybe I'll just do it like this. Alright, and then let's uh what else do we have here? Oh cool. You can update it after the fact. Uh, except reset the scale a bit, so if I grab the capsule for example, it as long as I have it selected it replace the its placement. That's really neat. Uh, so let's look at the some of the buttons that here are on the gizmo. There's a sticky mode, which, if you click and drag, looks like there's a number zero, but I'm not sure how to set it to one because I'm I'm dragging it around all canvas all the way. Okay, you can go to unmask mesh center, which is. Uh, when you, if you alt click anywhere, you can change the pivot of your gizmo. Uh, but then, with, when you click on this, it kind of goes just to the center. And the nice thing about this is, um, uh, they change the visibility thing. So, how do I hide all? No idea. So, either way, so if I grab this like a, a mask a certain piece uh, or like certain part of the mesh let's do something crazy like this uh, and then I press on this go to unmask center it centers the gizmo around the part that is not masked so it allows for really cool um, stuff like this now I can move around. I'm not sure if you can extrude. Okay, so if you control drag, you can extrude just like you would do in a, with the uh, with the transpose tool. So that's really handy. One thing that is not clear to me, so if I mask again, it looks like if you mask over the masked object, it unmasks it. It's like a toggle thing. Yeah, it'll take some time to get used to. This is pretty cool though. So if I scale this object down, we can go in and integrate it. Mesh to access alt to undock. That's interesting. So if I press this, 
not sure what it actually does. Oh, it's, it's, it looks like it's center, is it? Typically, I would pro like I'm, after I'm done the stream, I'm gonna go through the official PDF and really learn what these things are. This video is very much a first impression of the the new tool. All right, so let's see. Let's go to Z Modeler. Maybe I want to bevel it more or increase the smoothness of it. And then I have crease brush on. So I can do stuff like this to add a little bit creasing. Pretty cool. So this is more of an old school way of using the Z modeler to create hard surface detail. And you can see it's pretty slow because you have to click on the individual uh, edge to create extra geometry. But now I could easily just do insert, use like the IMM primitives. There's primitives and primitives H. I assume H only means that it's high poly or something. Or is it because oh it looks like it's it doesn't have uh, the edge. Okay, so Gonna do split hidden. And typically I have all these commands on my custom thing that as you if you missed the first part of the video, it uh, didn't seem to work particularly well in the new version. So I'm just kinda suffering through it a bit, but Okay, so we have this guy. Let's out the collapse. Oh, neat. Looks like you can collapse multiple sections. So I'm going to set this guy. Subtractor because for some reason it's not subtracting anymore. Oh, because light pulling is off. <laughs> Alright, so. to be start, I want it to be subtractive, but I want this to be subtractive from this guy. And it looked like I needed to reinitiate the booleans to make it happen, which is fine. And uh, 
I'm just going to use move. Okay, so mass center. Reset mesh orientation. Mm, not that what I mm, not exactly what I want. So if, believe if I can if I unlock this I can ro rotate the pivot without rotating the actual geometry. So that's what I'm gonna do. Is there a way to go to axes? No. Okay, so if you press unlock and you do reset the rotation, you will only reset the pivot and not the geometry. That's really cool. But now I can lock it back. So now I have a perfectly aligned cutter. And we can cut it out. And we can duplicate it and set it to additive. Let's scale it in and uh, alt the scale to only scale it on one axis. Pretty good. Z modeler would definitely be a huge thing here for doing stuff like quick bevels, especially in cylindrical stuff. I, I don't like having uh, the edges like this. So, Let's do a bevel. And increase, increase. No. Oh, okay. Increase there, increase there. So nice and very precise. Maybe something like this would be cool. And what else can we do here? Chisel 3D. Chisel. Insert. Hmm, I'm I am Boolean. Let's see what this thing does. So this looks like a really cool uh, kit bashing starting point. Let's grab this nice lovely heat sink. And if you remember, I can do reset rotation to set it to defaults, but then it will ignore my placement, so I'll leave it as it is.
All right. What about? Can I use it to subtract? Oh, oops. So how do I apply this? Um, in terms of symmetry. Okay, let's try something like this. You would need a new object to subtract. So let's do the pants under 3D. Or, well, now that I have a cylinder appended. I can always just go to this thing and replace it with poly cylinder. I have no idea where it went. Oh. Pretty small. <laughs> okay, and then reset Axie. There you go. That's what I want. I love the, the these primitives. They're really handy for design aspect. All right, so bam. You can actually divide it using traditional divisions. That is cool. Or using the uh, dynamic ones. So it seems like whenever I click on a, on a subtool and then I select uh, a piece of geometry from here, it tends, tends to replace uh, underlying stuff. So what if I append something like this giant sphere and now I add the, the support axis? Now it doesn't. That's weird.
and you can see I have extra symmetry enabled here. Uh, I didn't want to have it. Yeah, I must be missing something. So if we go here and use insert, doesn't seem to insert. Oh, then I need to double click. Yeah, so if I double click, it replaces the existing thing, but I just want to select it so I can draw. Oh, I need to be in a draw mode as I was in move. That that was part of the problem. So, transform, so we just want it on z-axis, and then when we go to move, move it in place, pop it in. Okay, so now problem is that piece of ge geometry I have in here is cutting into the new part which I don't want it to happen so what do we do about that You have too many cylinders, it's hard to tell which one is which. Maybe I'll enable this so I can actually tell what's going on. So polyframe, let's let's go through this again. So I have this guy, which is fine. This guy is fine. This guy needs to be start. start. This guy is a cutter. It is fine. This needs to be under this guy. And this guy should be just fine. I don't see my, my little cylinder that I had here that was cutting this guy. So I can see how this can become with a lot more uh, complex objects. It's hard enough with tools like Mesh Fusion being confused about which part goes where. And here you have a very linear kind of tree that goes from top to bottom. And I can see how this can become very confusing down the road when you have a lot of assets and a lot of bevels, so, or booleans, sorry. So I'd imagine you would probably want to clean this up and merge tools as you go. And granted, I don't have a lot of experience with this new uh, version of ZBrush yet. So I'm not exactly, I don't exactly know what I'm doing, but this can become very, very complicated.
and subtool tree as it is was uh, one of the most complained parts of the ZBrush when you have to go through and do a lot of scrolling to get from point A to point B. And with the addition of booleans, I kind of wish that they had some kind of a graph tree where you can actually connect uh, directly which uh, subtool affects what tool. And the fact that it also scrolls doesn't help. Okay, so this is... Let's just duplicate this guy. Kind of hidden. Okay, set this to subtractive. Enable booleans. Okay, this is much better. Now, how do we fix this part? Another thing I'm curious about whether it's uh, CPU based or or how they actually like what what part of hardware should I upgrade to improve my performance because. It's not super bad. It's actually pretty impressive how fast the the booleans are, but uh, I can see it growing a little bit slow. So we have. This part, which I only want it to affect. This guy, which is fine. So basically all I need to do is. This no. I'm confused. Okay, so is this the one? The part that makes it a little bit confusing is the fact that when I hide stuff it doesn't always hide right away. Okay, it seems like I've merged this guy into the other guy that explains the problem. So let's split the hidden. It would be under subtool. Okay, this is better. So. The boolean, uh, the polyframe is something that I can't imagine I'm going to be trying on and off a lot. Thank <laughs> you. 
So one thing that uh, in the past you were able to do is hide everything by just alt clicking uh, by clicking on the eyeball icon, which is not the case anymore. You have to use shift, and that hides everything but your current subtool. So they changed this a bit, which I guess is more user friendly, but to people who are been use, using this in the past, it's uh, a little bit inconvenient. Okay, so I messed up here. Um, Okay, so this part I don't need. Uh, under geometry, delete hidden. I might uh, start using UI groups uh, now that there's more tools to worry about, but so far I'll just stick to everything being exposed. No, one thing I realized, I think uh, allow click to solo is off, which typically I like a lot. There it is. So with this option on, you can quickly isolate certain parts. That would help a lot. Okay, so once again, I've lost my boolean here. Yeah, click to solo wood is great. So what's happening is it is under wrong layer. So I want it to be affecting this guy. This guy would be our leader. Okay, this is better. Now if I go to this part, uh, you can see it has a hole in it, so we can fix it. All right, so with this guy, uh, let's let's look at the IMM boolean, and with this part selected, I should be able to just double click this, uh, maybe I need to be in a move mode, mode. maybe, yeah. yeah, and you can see our transforms are really tiny, so what do we do, how do we fix this? I guess simply by just scaling it up and enabling LSIM. Where's our LSIM? There it is. Not bad. Okay, reset rotation. Oh. Yeah, so yeah, the rotation and the scale, like this, the orientation and 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 mesh location, the two parts that are kind of weird at the moment. So. Hmm. All right. So, but now that I clicked on reset and then I clicked on it again, it appears to come come in properly. So maybe that's what you want to do. Uh, 
I'm doing great. Uh, yeah, the new announcement. Uh, I, I've been looking forward to the uh, the the boolean stuff for a while. I'm glad it's finally out. So. Now, if I press log button and press go to Axie, okay, so it goes back to zero, zero. Uh, I want to go to Unmask Mesh Center. Uh, what this allows me to do is to scale it properly. Now, so here's the thing. If I look at this topology, this is where something like an extender, a deformer, would be amazing because previously I would mask half of the thing and then move apart this way and then invert it and move it this way but with this extender deformer you can just do this and that's pretty awesome but there's still I mean room for Okay, I need to apply the extender though. Okay, so there's still room for masking and moving. So, all right. Now this is going to be my additive. What I'm going to do is, it seems like... Uh, the hole that I have in my main mesh is a little bit wonky. And that's the geometry that does it. Much better. It's just this is, it was the scale issue. Seems like. So let's uh, let's see uh, how the the baking of the booleans actually works. So uh, under under subtool, uh, you'll see make boolean mesh. Let's enable dynamic subdivision and press apply. And while that's happening, I'll have some coffee. All right. <laughs> um, actually, no. Um, so the problem that, that I have here is I wasn't too careful with my kind of the grouping parents. And that's why I have it as a, as a bunch of different parts, which is not exactly what I want. So if I go back to our original nine subtool thing, and let's see. So this guy does not need to be be a start. It can be just regular. Uh, it's to be visible. Uh, this guy needs to be a start because uh, it's we are cutting away from it several times. Now this guy, you only uh, needed to be in this start 
arrow mode only when you're subtracting from it, as far as I understand. So this guy, we're cutting from it. Uh, or are we? Yeah, what happens when we... Oh, looks fine. Yeah, we're not cutting from this guy, so... Really, the only start we need here is this central body. Okay, so let's try this again and see how this affects our final result. So we're so now this part consists out of two pieces of geometry, uh, which is weird because it should be just one. It looks like I have a duplicate here, so this could be just me messing doing something wrong. But yeah, let's see. Should have only one of these shapes here. Yeah, it looks like I have one and two of exact same shapes. Okay, well this is totally my fault. Oh crap, I forgot to enable the dynamic situation. Let's do it again. Now, which one is which? This looks about right. And you can see we have nice and clean geometry, and I can subdivide it more if I need to. Or enable dynamics. Looks like it doesn't have the edge creasing, but. It does have all the polygroups, so I can easily just crease polygroups and then enable dynamic subdivision. And that would be it. Well, that would do it. Oh, this must have been the version where I didn't enable the. There is the one I need, I think. Yeah, that was the version where I didn't enable uh, uh, dynamic subdivision, so it didn't uh, propagate properly. But here you can see it's subdivided nicely. I wonder if my uh, key shot still works. So this is interesting. External render key shot. Let's see. Uh, where's the render? Oh, there it is. I might have to activate key shot for bridge, or maybe not, I'm not sure, because I didn't get the new... Oh, no, looks like it's working. Excellent. Metal, steel, dusty. Beautiful. This makes me happy.
All right. So what I want to do next is just sculpt some some organic forms uh, for fun. Maybe try the vector displacement maps that come with the uh, with the new version, and then see how we can use booleans to clean up uh, some of that stuff. So let's just go to Lightbox and grab a uh, uh, sphere. Nice low res sphere. Okay, so because I don't have my um, custom menu, so I'll just dock the brush panel, enable symmetry. And let's start sculpting. Transpose now shows the axes, which is cool. size feels like it takes forever to adjust the brush size even though dynamic is off typically that was the issue and that sounds to me like a big deal because I like using bracket keys to adjust the size of the brush and right now in order to get to very small or from very big to very small it takes forever um, I wonder if there's a sensitivity setting somewhere. Okay, let's see what do we have in terms of uh, vector displacement brushes. Ooh, there is a paintbrush. What does that do? I have no idea. Oh, it's probably just our RGB only brush. Okay. Uh, okay, so tune. Not what I want. Where is my. Well, these are chisel 3Ds. Oh, okay, so chisel 3D knows. Uh, let's get rid of the color. I'm gonna get rid of uh, Dynamesh and subdivide it a bit. Okay, that's not bad. Shapey. Um, I guess symmetry is not an option. That's really cool. Wow, this is really good. All right. Man, being able to just drop a part of the sculpt on a can on on a object is crazy. Does the intensity affect it? Yeah, the intensity totally affects the amount of displacement you get, so you can get it more flat if you want to. And uh, what 
but I boss. <laughs> uh. Yeah, eyeball's a little bit different deal. Also, yeah, dividing helps. Hmm. Wonder if I can use the dot. Uh, no. Drag dot. Yeah. Drag dot might be a better option here. Yeah, I think uh, for eyeballs, I'd still prefer uh, kind of manual placement. Now, in terms of ears, that's a totally different story. We can smooth out this shape. Crank it up and get the ear in. Oh, this is so good. Uh, this is a game changer. Bam. All right, so let's uh, let's do some sculpting to prepare it for for our eyeball placement. Uh, clay. Uh, I don't want RGB. Okay, and we are a little bit too high in terms of subdivisions. We'd probably want to establish some kind of a flat surface for where we want to put the eyes in. but that's fine. So now if we go back to our high subdivision level. How are you doing, Jeff? I was using. I think it was chisel 30. Yeah. Mm, there's something really freaky about this. I can see how this the eyeball brush would be handy in like uh, very low res early stages, but for something that I guess that's not half bad. Now I can just adjust its placement by masking and transposing. Let's try. Uh, this uh, new gizmo for more organic stuff. So all holding alt to unlock and then rotating it. Moving in screen space.
Well, that's not too bad. Alright. What about this, the, the, the regular chisel? So this guy is using a 3D... Uh, the, not 3D, but vector displacement to create this really sharp hard surface stuff. Which is pretty cool. Um, chisel rectangle. Whoa. What the hell is this? Neat. Chisel creature. I feel like that's what we want. Oh, there's more eyeballs. <laughs> Man, that can be really, really cool for like a random character creation or like the generation of uh, random shapes. So where's our classic damn standard? Let's start working these shapes together with clay to build them up. Flatten brush. Flatten is my favorite for establishing the planes. Hmm. Under topology modification, let's do a mirror and weld because I believe it's not fully symmetrical. There you go.
Typically, I like to keep the eyeballs as a separate subtools, but because this is a quick sketch and just generally a test of the uh, brush, they're combined. What I could do, however, is using mask, grab this garbage eyeball that I don't like. and use the existing kind of the eyelid shape to select this and then with transpose or in this case the new fancy gizmo move it in a lot and now i can add Insert a sphere. And split hidden. There we go, much cleaner. So in the light box, there's a lot of new stuff that they've included. Uh, you can actually get like a pen holder and uh, from Wacom, like all the proper models so you can uh, make your own stuff. There's a jewelry ring, so my girlfriend can finally get a model of the engagement ring that she wants, if I ma ever manage to spend uh, time on creating one. There's also new materials. Eh, no, these look like more like old materials. But there's a lot of new cool stuff here. Definitely check it out. Uh, where's Matt Caps? I feel like there were more math gaps by default, but I uh, might be just spoiled because I renamed uh, my custom one every single time. Holy Skin is a new shader that they have. It's a really good one. I really like it.
Okay, so good move. Let's establish some Arbor Ridge. shape oh what we, can we do here so I'm thinking I'm gonna give the guy glasses using the new booleans Let's see how that goes all right so where do we start? Let's append. Uh, or, well, really, we can just append anything and then go into move and pick our shape. Cylinder 3D sounds like a good start. No, this is a poly cylinder. We need cylinder 3D. There you go. So using the um, extender, I'm going to modify the shape a bit. That's pretty cool, the way you can change the form. And maybe I'm going to curve them slightly. using bend arc something along these lines rotate Pretty cool. Uh, let's do the mirror and weld so I get uh, some symmetry going on. Uh, I'll same. I think I need it off for this reason. Bam. Excellent. We could also try the former, which is the lattice. Uh, doesn't look like it's uh, arranged properly. Oh, so let's try this. So I'm gonna 
reset the rotation of the gizmo, then go and grab my lattice. Okay, perfect. And we can also adjust the... I want to adjust the amount of uh, points I have on the lattice. I don't need that many. Pretty cool. You can see there's a little bit of a creasing going on. I can just either, well, we can go and do increase all. We can also experiment with the crease by polar groups. But I think in this case, I'll just leave it uncreased. Okay, so what else can we do here? So, um, polyframe. I think using using uh, Z modeler, I can add a little bit of a bridge, or we can do it through uh, through booleans. Not sure yet. Okay, so if I select these two, and then go and find bridge, two polys. Maybe not two polys. Not two polys. No. Let's try to mesh. Yeah, that's not ex like like the Q mesh can be confusing like this. A lot of times, what I like to do is just uh, disable symmetry, which oh, that might be a part of the problem. So especially for something like this, what you can do is to delete hidden and work on one part of the geometry. Do something like this. And then go ahead and do mirror and weld. And you can see you got a perfect symmetry scene. Now with move you can get it in place. I could probably use a topological move here to Get it all nicer. And maybe a little bit of the inflate.
Bam. Pretty cool. Okay, so let's uh, let's start at using a little bit more of booleans. So I'm gonna append a cube. Hey Shamas, uh, it's pretty great. I'm loving it. Uh, and yes, you missed a lot. You missed all of it, but it's okay. Uh, I think I'm going to be doing a lot of ZBrush in upcoming days. So if I very quickly grab the cube and readjust the subdivisions of it, maybe something. I don't need too much subdivisions really. Just let's let's stick with the cube and then scale it down. So this guy is going to be my the edge here. The, the part where the the, the the it connects the the rest of the sunglasses, the, the part that goes to the ear. My sunglasses anatomy is bad. I don't know what parts they consist of. Is it the ear piece? What is it called? I want this connection where the red cube connects to the body very nice and organic. So maybe let's start by uh, giving it a dynamic subdivision and go for more of a smooth one. My favorite extender. Love this thing. Okay, and then, oh, this is so good. Being able to like move the center around. This is crazy talk. So I can kind of adjust the form by moving the central subdivision. Then we can adjust the scale. Okay, so that's cool. Let's let's apply it, and uh, uh, now that I have a more subdivided geometry. I can use Z modeler to really, or even just a move brush, really, to get these verts in place to make sure that they don't penetrate my main body of this sunglasses. But I can also use the slice curve to add a little bit of topology and really bend it to my need. That's pretty good. And I'm gonna use uh, maybe clip curve. Gently adjust it more. Really, I, like the the sunglasses probably don't require as much buoyance as uh, as I, I originally thought they would. It's pretty simple. We can use more Z modeler. 
bit of Q mesh. Oops, accidental selection. All right, so here, what I can also do just once again is the modeler. Grab these two faces, extract them, and then create a new cube based on that. And then let's select it, control W to uh, turn it into one group, and then split hidden. This way it's a separate geometry. So gizmo, center it, lock it back, and now I can adjust it. I'm a huge Transpose fan, so I thought I would originally hate this uh, classic kind of more 3D app-like gizmo, but uh, it's not bad, it's growing on me. If you're listening and can't believe your ears that I said that, well, yeah, I like transpose. So you can see the part of the problem I have here, yeah, maybe due to the dynamic subdivision, this box feels kind of wonky. So what we can do is using the new uh, dynamic transforms, just uh, replace it with the cube, and uh, maybe let's see if I center it and then go make it a cube. We can see it's a little bit more in in play, uh, where I need it to be, and now we can scale the cube instead to avoid uh, unnecessary wonkiness. My ears so a bit too high.
Okay, Z modeler. Let's see if we can subdivide it in a nice fashion. Kind of add like a partial crease in here. I can also use slide to uh, complete to force a certain type of a shape. And go for a more kind of hard surface look. A little bit wonky. What I can do actually is uh, do polish by groups, which should probably help, or polish by features. Let's make it one group and then in. Deformers. Polish by features. Um, the problem is that I don't have too much creasing, so let's see. Can, no, relax is not the one. That's better. Okay, so back to here. Let's see. Huh, extender for some reason resets my transform. Wonder why. What I'm gonna do with this guy is I'll use it to create an interesting extrusion here, or like subtraction rather. This is gonna be my start, this is gonna be my end. And there you go. Pretty good. Okay, so this guy is a brand new piece. Why is this not working anymore? Oh, there you go. Under a slice curve, we can add. No, oh, not slice curve, not click curve. We can add some. Additional edge loops, so we can deform this thing further. For some things, I still would prefer to use transpose, especially when stuff is kind of on an angle and more organic. But 
Let's try the new uh, curve band deformer. So I'm going to add a bunch of subdivisions here. And let's see, so if I go bend curve. Uh, wrong way. I'm not sure how they were controlling the axis. That's something. Might be this thing. Oh, there we go. Awesome. Okay. So now I can scale, twist, scale, and then squeeze. Okay. Um, then symmetrical, smooth, curve resolution, and then the bend. Okay, so if I go here. Okay, I didn't have enough of points, so let's add some. Oh yeah, okay, so I don't want symmetric, however. So let's disable the set symmetry to zero. Okay, and now I can go ahead and start wrapping this thing up around the ear. That's pretty awesome. That's really awesome. Did I mention it's really awesome? In case you guys didn't hear it, that's pretty awesome. All right, cool. Maybe go a little bit fancy and then have it wrap around the ear later. All right, set, bam, done. And what we can do is give it some dynamic subdivision. And now with move, I can uh, morph, move, go back and add a little bit thickness. So, we can also inflate this part of it. With this guy, let's mirror and weld it. This guy. So this part I'm not completely sure. It should work fairly well if I just mirror and weld it. Because it, it will maintain the subtle hierarchy. I can't see why it wouldn't. But let's try it. So mirror and weld. Uh, you can see it mirrored. And I also need to mirror and weld the, the part that I used to subtract from this piece. So for this, yeah, that's this my subtractor. And as you can see, it's only on one side. So if I go ahead and do mirror and weld, beauty. And you can see we have symmetrical geometry. Pretty happy. 
No, this was a just a quick uh, quick sculpt. By no means any anything advanced, but uh, you can see I was able to quickly model uh, uh, more or less intricate uh, glasses shape very quickly. And that's pretty exciting to me. So how would I go about adding glasses, like the actual glass to these sunglasses? That's something I'm not quite sure about. Let's see. Because even with booleans, I can see it being pain because we need to match the existing uh, existing angle. Which I guess wouldn't be too bad, but sounds like there might be a better way to do this. Let's see. Mm -hmm. So I can extract this edge loop. Uh, and then maybe bridge it. Not sure. Let's do it. Let's try the boolean. Uh, I was using the the bracket keys to make the brush smaller and bigger. They are the they are assigned to the bracket keys by default. Same keys as uh, what you'd use in Photoshop. Um, I didn't assign them. They're just there always been. The problem is that back in 4.7 uh, they added the dynamic feature which significantly slowed down the amount of time it takes from a smaller from from small brush to turn it into a larger brush. Uh, so you would constantly have to disable dynamic but now even with dynamic disabled it still takes some time to make the brush bigger. So I'm wondering if there is anything in preferences that allows you to change the amount of, like, the kind of the sensitivity of... of the bracket keys. But I'm not sure. Hey, dynamic brush scale. Maximum brush size. Uh, I wonder if that's it. Not sure. Placement. What's placement? <gasps> Wait, scale speed. No, that would be scale and rotation I could potentially uh, set the maximum uh, brush size to a smaller like 300 this way it takes faster to get to the maximum size yeah, that's probably the best way to control it, but I can see how this can bite me in a bad look down the road. Okay, so let's go to Z Modeler and then I can use slide to mess with the form of, of the glasses.
All right, so let's uh, let's try this. I am going to append a new cube. Actually, I don't need to append a new cube. All I need is just a plane, really, and get it kind of in place, and then. Uh, Do I need thickness? No, not yet. I need to cut it all out the sh kind of the shape of the glasses. So what I can do is uh, duplicate this guy. And use it. Maybe flatten it a bit more. Let's see. That's an interesting challenge. Um, can I just do this? Like mask lasso. All right, something like this. <laughs> uh, all right. So I cut this part out. Now, if I go back to my plane, wonder if I can create a, a public groups based on this, or I probably need to apply this. So let's do that. Go to. Make Boolean mesh. Did I did not press it? What's going on? Oh, crap. I think I didn't make it almost ready. Yeah, this entire approach with like a multiple tools and multiple subtools that can get quite messy. Okay, let's append the plane. Let's turn it into the Boolean mesh. There you go. So now we have the actual cutout. And if you look at it in poly... Oh, holy crap. <laughs> That's not nice. So, let's see. Doesn't The topology technically doesn't matter because I can't just zero mesh it. So let's go freeze border. There's probably an easier way to, to cut out the exact shape for glasses, but I'm experimenting. Okay, Aaron Counter, remesh and abort it. Alright. Let's do this. So, polygroups, I need different polygroups for different parts.
Auto groups. <laughs> Yikes. Something tells me that uh, the new booleans don't really do well with the uh, single sided plane geometry. I might be wrong, but this looks like a trouble. Okay, welding points uh, makes it worse somewhat. Yeah. Okay, let's do this. Just using select lasso or select one I uh, delete hidden. Now I'm gonna add thickness to this piece. Uh, nope. <laughs> All right. Maybe extract? No. Yeah, this geometry is garbage. Merge trees. Uh. No, not buying it. How do we cut out the glass piece? Hmm. First, let's grab this plane and let's add thickness to it. Bam. That would be a much better result, would give us a much better result, I'm sure. So let's try the Yeah, I need to start using the UI groups or get my custom UI back. Make boolean mesh. Okay, now we have the actual proper geometry. And that's great. Uh, we can do split to parts. This is great. Now I can go back to my uh, my model and reassemble this all together. We don't need this, and we don't need this. I'll append my individual glass. Awesome. use transpose. So what we're gonna do now is using this the curve, uh, new curve deformer, we're gonna fit this uh, the glass into the frame. Draw. Okay, where's our gizmo? All right, so probably bent curve is the best bet. Uh, let's adjust the axis, and we don't need this many subdivisions. Really, it can be like B. And now, from the top view, perfect. And I'm just gonna nudge it a bit to fit it in better. And what I'm gonna do next is uh, just grab a move brush and kind of fine tune it a little. But yeah, that's pretty perfect. Uh, 
His glasses generally they they stick out like this. Let's add some dynamic subdivisions to it. Um, you can see the topology is a little bit wonky, but it's, let's see uh, what we can do. Uh, crease by edges or by polygroups. That might help. And it took like this. Okay, and let's mirror and weld. Found the geometry. Bam. So you can see we quickly put together some dude. I'm still not happy with his face, but I need flatten brush. I'm gonna spend five minutes trying to fix his jaw, and then we're gonna move on. I promise. One thing I noticed is in live boolean mode, my masking doesn't always display. Might be a feature or might be a bug. I wasn't sure why the masking wouldn't be working. I mean, there is no point in refining this guy, but I just want the draw to look a little bit better. All right, so. I'm starting to run out of steam, but before I call it a day, let's uh, actually throw it into Keyshot and see what it looks like, just so I can feel good about myself. Because nothing makes you feel better than Keyshot. That's a well proven fact. Something is still off. I think it is neck is still thin or something. But it doesn't matter. Okay, so yeah, I maxed out my brush draw size at 300, and I don't think it was a good idea because now I can make a brush bigger than this. There's probably a good uh, fine balance for it. Maybe 500 would be better. Okay, key shot time. Magic. 
DPR. Where are you, buddy? So, for skin, human skin too. For glass, let's get us some glass. We can give him some pink glasses, because why not? And let's get some uh, hard, shiny plastic. Oh, so the problem here is, um, as you can see, I didn't apply my uh, booleans. <laughs> this, sorry, this, uh, uh, <laughs> these are the most pimping glasses I've ever seen. Um, I didn't apply my booleans and Keyshot doesn't recognize them, so what I want to do before I render stuff out Oh, actually, wait a second. They are not displaying properly here because I exited live boolean mode. So maybe that's what I want to do. Let's see. Live boolean on. I want to know what Shoka Planner is. Slower. Hmm. Interesting. So let's render it again. Move it. Oh, interesting. So whenever you enable Keyshot, live booleans turn themselves off. So you have to apply the the booleans. All right, let's do that. Yeah, zebras get into the point where it's so much shit. I need to start using UI groups. That makes me sad, but. No way around it. Where is it? I think it's on the sub Yeah. Okay, so. Ooh, ooh, Alright, I think that's the last one. Okay, so... Alright, yeah, so that's the combined version. If you look at the geometry, it's actually merged. So, there's a little bit of an issue with it not going all the way up. So, what I can do is quickly fix it. And now, let's go key shot. So that's a cool, it's an interesting discovery that you can't really preview the your booleans with the realistic materials as you model them. Uh, slightly disappointed, because like if I'm making a, a futuristic weapon of sorts, I'd love to see it with, with the cool proper materials and lighting. Plastic, soft, shiny.
couple parts got merged, but that's fine. I mean, the key shot workflow is pretty much done. Uh, I would need to disable auto merge because right now my glasses are part of my face, which is not ideal. But there you go, guys. I'm going to continue uh, going through documentation and reading, reading through it and learning about new features. And I will continue streaming my progress. And thanks for watching. Uh, we'll continue tomorrow. Cheers, guys. Now I'm just going to spend half an hour trying to find the stop stream button. Come on. Where are you, button? Was it? <laughs> oh well, gotta do it manually.